All right, so in this video, we're going to go over a few things. One is how to create a scatter plot in Excel. Um, we're going to then play around with the scatter plot, make sure we have our axes titled um, and our scale, uh, show you how to change the scale. Then we're going to add a trend line, okay, or a line of best fit to the scatter plot. And I'll show you how to input the equation. Uh, into the scatter plot, and then we're going to go over the correlation coefficient. So all three of these things really go hand in hand. Okay, so obviously you're going to want to enter your data in two rows or two columns, excuse me, uh, that are side by side. So here we've got creativity scores, which is our x variable uh, or our explanatory variable, and we've got sales growth, which is our output, our y variable, or our response variable. Okay. So, I've got the data highlighted. I'm going to go to Insert, and this little option right here is called an XY scatter plot. And we're going to insert the one that looks like a scatter plot here. Okay. So, notice um, my response variable sales growth I already put in there. I'm going to title it just a little bit differently. We'll call it like creativity uh, improves or sales growth. And I'm going to add a question mark there because, you know, I'm not sure if that's true or not. Uh, but with this data, it certainly appears to be the case, okay? Um, now, remember, if we're here, we can click on this plus sign here, which is going to lead us to our chart elements, okay? I like to have titles for the X and Y axis here. Uh, so over here on the uh, vertical axis, that was going to be sales growth. Okay, and our horizontal axis, our... Um, independent variable down here, our X was creativity scores. Okay. All right. Now, if I want, I can kind of change the scale. Like this gives me the whole first quadrant, which is fantastic. But, you know, if I want to zoom in a little bit, okay, I'm going to right click on this axis and I'm going to format the axis here. Okay. And our smallest X value is seven. And our largest X value is 18. So I'm going to go a little bit below uh, that and just press enter here. Okay, so you can see we've kind of zoomed in on the X part here. All right, if I right click on the Y, I'm going to format the Y axis now. My lowest value looks like it's 89 and my highest value appears to be 111. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to put in 85 here and hit enter. And you can see it goes from 85 to 115. Okay, so let me X out of that. Okay, so we've kind of zoomed in on the data a little bit. Okay, so we've titled our axes. Uh, we've titled the entire scatter plot, and we've zoomed in a little bit. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to input the line of best fit here. So I'm going to go back to chart elements here, and you can see trend line is down here. So I'm going to check on that. Okay, so that gives me the line of best fit but I want to input the equation too. So if I click on this arrow here, and I'm going to click on more options. Okay, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom, and notice it says display equation on chart. Okay, so you can see the equation popped up there. If you're dealing with R squareds, you can also display the R squared value on the chart. Uh, we're not doing that presently, so I'm not going to put that in there. Okay, so I'm going to move this down here a little bit. I'm going to make it a little easier to, well, it keeps moving here. So I want to kind of highlight that and make it bold and maybe make it a different color so it stands out a little bit, okay? So we've inserted the trend line. We've got an equation for our trend line or our line of best fit, okay? So that saved us a lot of work in and of itself coming up with that equation uh, using the, the chart here, okay? Now, if I want to find the correlation coefficient, so that's the R value, okay? So we're going to input a formula. So I'm going to put equals, and we're looking for correlation, and we're going to choose this C-O-R-R-E-L. So I'm going to double-click there, okay? Notice it says array 1. Array 1 is going to be our X values, okay? So that's array 1. Then we're going to separate the data with a comma. This tells me to put a comma there, so I'm going to type a comma in, and notice it moves to array 2. Array 2 is going to be my Y values. Okay? So I've got my X values first, my Y values second. Let me close parentheses here, and I'm going to press Enter, and I get my correlation coefficient. Okay? Which is really close to 1. Remember, correlation coefficients are between negative 1 
and positive one. Uh, the closer you get to one, the more uh, closely these are uh, related, okay? So this doesn't mean that creativity scores uh, cause cells growth. If your creativity score is higher, it doesn't necessarily mean there's a causation here, okay? But it does mean they're correlated. They are related. A higher creativity score uh, tends to correlate with improved cells growth, okay? So that's how you use Excel to create a scatter plot, to include a, tre a trend line, include the line of best fit equation, and then how to use a formula to create or calculate the correlation coefficient.